Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today, we're going to be taking an early look at the upcoming Odroid Go Super. Hard Kernel just announced that this will be releasing at the end of January 2021. And if you're not familiar with the Odroid Go advances in general, this is the last one that was released. Personally, I'm a big fan of these little handheld units, and the Odroid Go Advanced Black Edition, which I have right here, has a 3.5-inch IPS display, quad-core ARM CPU, and 1 gig of RAM. Runs several different operating systems, but the main claim to fame to this little unit is emulation. Now, they've made some changes with the Odroid Go Super, and one of the main changes is the size of the unit. Like I mentioned, the Odroid Go Advance, or the Black Edition, has a 3.5-inch IPS display. This one's been up to a 5-inch IPS display with a higher resolution. Now, inside of the box, you're going to get your USB Type-C cable for charging the unit up. On the back here, as you can see, we do have some ventilation for that CPU. Single speaker setup, but if I turn this thing around, you can see that the screen on this has definitely been upgraded, not to mention the extra analog stick here. Personally, I love the way they've set this up. We do have four triggers up here, and by the way, it does have a glass screen cover on it straight out of the box. So we don't have to worry about this thing scratching up like the older plastic one on the Odroid Go Advance and the Go Advance Black Edition. So they're going to be offering this in two different color variants. I chose the gray one here, but they also have a crystal clear version which can be painted from the inside like we did with the older Odroid Go Advance. So overall, first impressions on the screen, it looks great. Now it's been up from 480 by 320 on the original to 854 by 480 so we do have a higher resolution here. Like I mentioned, it does have a tempered glass cover. And another upgrade they made over the original was instead of a 3000 milliamp hour battery, this one's rocking a 4000 milliamp hour battery. Now as you can see on the front here, we do have a D-pad, dual analog sticks, A, B, X, Y. We also have start, select and four extra menu buttons at the bottom, and these can be programmed in software. There are several different operating systems that we'll be able to run on this, like Bot Ocera, EMU Elect, but one of my favorites is ORA, and I was lucky enough to receive an early version that fully works on the Odroid Go Super. So along with all the forward-facing buttons, up top here we have four trigger buttons, L1, L2, R1, R2, full-size USB port, USB Type-C, a 3.5mm headphone jack, our volume buttons, some GPIO pins here for adding extra accessories down the road, and our power button. Moving around back, we do have more ventilation for the CPU, and I can actually see the CPU through this little grate here. We will be able to add a heatsink to this, which is something we couldn't do with the original Odroid Go Advance, at least without some modification. It's a single speaker setup. I kind of wish they would have added stereo to this, but uh, we'll have to see how it sounds when we get everything up and running. And finally, on the bottom here, we have our micro SD card slot, and this is what we're going to install our operating system on and our games to run it from. Just to give you an idea on how big the Super is, I wanted to compare it to some other handhelds that are on the market right now. First up, we have the original Odroid Go Advance. Well, actually, this is the Black Edition. Next up, we have the RG351P from Ambernec. The Retroid Pocket 2, a full size Nintendo Switch, and one of my favorite handhelds of all time, the Switch Lite. As you can see, I mean, it's definitely on par with the size of the Switch Lite. So it's still a little early for the software I have on the Odroid Go Super, but I still want to test a few things out, and then we're going to get into a quick teardown. But real quick, let's check out the specs for the CPU. We still have that RK3326. This is a quad-core Cortex A35 CPU at 1.3 gigahertz. The GPU is the Mali G31, 1 gig of RAM, 5-inch IPS display, 854 by 480. And as for operating systems, all of the builds will be based on Linux, but we'll have several to choose from. Botocera, EMU Elect, Laka, ORA, and there's a few more over on the website that I personally haven't tested out because there's a plethora of them. But for this video here, I do have an early version of ORA that does work with the Go Super, so let's go ahead and test a few things out. Alright, so as you can see, I mean, there's a ton of systems listed here, and it doesn't mean that every single system is going to run at full speed. We have taken an extensive look at what the RK3326 can do, and that's exactly what we have in this unit here. The main changes between the Super and the original Odroid Go Advance are the addition of that extra analog stick and the much bigger screen and battery. But I still wanted to get a little bit of gameplay out of the way before we do a teardown because I'm really interested to see how they have this one put together. First up we have some Neo Geo, then we'll move over to Dreamcast, then then swap over to PSP, and after that we'll do a teardown on this unit.
Alright, so performance looks about the same as the original Odroid Go Advance. Let's go ahead and give this a tear down and just take a look inside of it. Looks easy enough. We have seven screws on the back here, and one thing I didn't notice earlier was this reset button. It can be pressed with a screwdriver or a paper clip in case you need to hard reset this unit at any time. So I'm going to go ahead and get these seven screws out and see if we can get the back off of this thing. All right, so it looks like we should be able to pull this right off, and the only thing attached to the back cover is the speaker itself. Let me go ahead and unplug this from the main board. And uh, I just pulled it out of the back anyway. So it wasn't glued in or anything like that. It kind of snaps into place. And I mean, yeah, overall, this has definitely been totally redesigned. We have that 4,000 milliamp hour battery here. And it looks like the analog sticks are actually attached to the main board itself with these little plastic adapters. I think that's going to be the case here. And on the original Odroid Go Advance, the analog stick was actually screwed into the upper side of the case. So I do think they've attached both of these to the main board itself. And if these analog sticks are attached to the main board, I will not have to unplug them. The only thing I'll have to unplug here is this LCD ribbon cable, which uh, you need to be a little careful with. So I'll go ahead and pull these tabs up here on the LCD ribbon cable. And then we have two extra screws that are holding the PCB inside of the front half of this shell. I'm going to go ahead and get those out and then see if we can remove this main board. So I definitely want to be careful with this. I just need to make sure that nothing else is attached because this is the only unit I have right now. I'll go ahead and get that ribbon cable out of the way. And this should pull right up. So yeah, that looks good. We have that 5-inch IPS screen here attached to the front half of the shell. It does have the rubber membranes on the A, B, X, Y button and the D-pad. So these could be replaced down the road if you ever needed to. And just as I thought, those analog sticks are attached to the front of this PCB. So yeah, they're screwed in from the back. They're not going to go anywhere. You don't have to unplug them when you do a disassembly. And it looks like the PCB is marked with Odroid Go 3, but this is known as the Odroid Go Super. So yeah, they've definitely done a great job with this PCB. That 4000 milliamp hour battery is attached to the main board itself, and it's not going to get in the way of the RAM and the CPU like on the original Odroid Go Advance. And by the way, when the shell is on this, we do have enough room to put a heatsink on that CPU. So hopefully we can get a little bit of an overclock out of this in the near future. And I'll come up with a heatsink solution for this unit. I do have a ton of them laying around. I just need to see which one's going to fit underneath this back shell. So in my next video, we'll take a look at that also. So far, I'm a real big fan of the form factor. I love the fact that we have a much bigger console here with that big 5-inch screen. I do wish it was 4x3, but they've added a 16x9 aspect ratio screen to this. So adding bezels to RetroArch is definitely going to be a must-have with something like this, especially when we're playing those older games that are meant to be played on a 4x3 screen, because we'll have those black bars on the side. But with just a little bit of software tweaking, we can get some nice-looking bezels added to this thing, and we still have a much bigger play field than the older Odroid Go Advance. A couple things I wish they would have added here, a second speaker, so we could have got stereo sound out of it, and Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, this does not come with any Wi-Fi at all pre-installed, not even 2.4 gigahertz. So you will have to add your own USB adapter, and that's why they left that full-size USB port on the top. But there are some pretty good 5 GHz adapters out there that will allow us to do Steam Link and Moonlight with relative ease on this console. 
And the last thing I would have loved to see being changed in this unit is the whole CPU and RAM setup. It's using the same exact CPU and the same amount of RAM as the Odroid Go Advance. Now when it comes to the amount of RAM, one gig is definitely plenty for a retro console like this. But it would have been really nice to see an upgraded CPU in this unit so we could have played the harder to emulate stuff easily on the Odroid Go Super. But I completely understand that it would have taken a lot longer to R&D something like that. And when it comes down to it, we already have some really decent software that can be easily ported over to this unit. Developers basically just need to factor in that extra analog stick and the larger screen size. So it should be easy to bring all of the operating systems that run on the Odroid Go Advance to the Odroid Go Super. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. Just wanted to give you the first look at the Odroid Go Super. I personally like the console. Hopefully we see some more developments happen with this unit here. And it's just a matter of time before we get all of that great software ported over here. I will be doing a couple more follow-up videos. So if there's anything else you want to see running on this unit, just let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in getting your hands on one of these, definitely keep an eye on Hard Kernel's website. I'll leave a link in the description. They're stating that these are going to go for $80 and they'll be available at the end of January 2021. But like always, thanks for watching.